My Lord Jesus Christ bless you all. Um, came to mind, um, go back over this uh, section of scriptures, go back to this Second Timothy chapter 1, a little study that we've been doing. Um, it's really been a blessing to me. I thank Jesus for going verse by verse, not really in any hurry. We're just doing it little by little as the Lord gives it to us. Uh, just learning what Jesus is talking about here and how he's using Apostle Paul to te teach young Timothy. You know, it's that simple. Um, a lot of times that, that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be encouraging one another, we're supposed to be reminding one another that we're here to help each other. Uh, there are times that God uses us to, to tell one another things that I know it aggravates us. I know it gets us to where we're like, ah, who do they think to be telling me? But I can tell you somebody who's actually led by Jesus, they're not they're not trying to just say, everybody, you need to do this because I'm doing everything great. They're actually trying to help us. They're actually trying to um, use the word of, God, word of God to edify one another. And a lot of times, in order to do that, we have to hear things that, you know, we, we, we know that's the truth, but we don't want to hear. But the book of Proverbs talks about that a wise man will listen to wise counsel. So if, if God's word, and you have to understand this, if God loves us, then he's going to tell us the truth. That's why he sent his word to us, because he does love us. That's why he's telling us the truth ahead of time. In our society, we think that somebody that loves us should tell us anything we want to hear, but that's not how it is. That's actually somebody who doesn't care about us. They just tell us anything just to get us out of the way. God's not that way. God has told us from the very beginning, this is what I expect. This is what you need to do. So he's using Paul here to do the same thing with Timothy, to remind him this is what you need to do. And so we're going to go back into here. Uh, we're going to praise the Lord Jesus because Jesus is the one who died on the cross, paid the price for us. Because of that price he gave with his blood, we uh, were able to have the Holy Spirit. We are able to have that wonderful teacher with us that teaches us about Jesus and about the Father. So 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, we're going to go to um, verse 13. Um, this is where we've left off. So here he tells, here he tells Timothy, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwelleth in us. This thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes. So, Let's go back here to verse 13. It says, hold fast the form of sound words. Apostle Paul, it's amazing. Now, we have the translation from Greek into the English language. So you have to remember, too, I mean, this, this English that's speaking here is quite a bit older than what we use now. But the form of the sound words... There's more depth to that than what we realize. A lot of times we just kind of glance through the Word of God, and we all do this. And we just kind of keep going. But when it talks about here the form of sound words, the Word of God isn't just a word said, okay? The Word of God has a lot of meaning behind it. It's a good word. It's a sound word, meaning that it, this isn't talking about here just the way it's pronounced or enunciated. This is actually talking about something that is good for you, something that is going to benefit you in the long run and now. That's something about the Word of God that where you hear a lot of people talk about it, that it's alive. Okay, it, it actually, it's not just regular words. If you read the dictionary, that's just words. But the arrangement of the words that are in the Word of God make perfect sense. A lot of times we may not like it. And therefore to us at the moment, 
I don't know about that. You know, you hear a lot of people say that. I mean, I used to be that way too. I, I've heard that most of my life, but I don't really know what that means or I don't know about that. You learn as you get a little older and if you're truthful with yourself that, man, that was, that's exactly the way it is. You know, read through the book of Proverbs and you see it talking about, you know, just to give an example, he, he talks about, uh, he's trying to tell his his young son, and this is Solomon who wrote this for actually his sons, and trying to get them to understand that they need to beware of, of the woman that comes up to them and deceives them and tells them, oh, my husband's not here right now. He went on his way, and she talks to him real sweet and talks to him in a certain way and then winds up deceiving him, and he winds up just like a lamb to the slaughter. He, he winds up just just walking right into her hands. He's putty in her hands per se is what you can say. And that's kind of quoting what the scripture there is talking about in Proverbs. And you realize that not only is that the truth, and you know, as, as a man and you get older, you realize that, man, that, that helped me a lot. That would have helped me a lot if I'd have paid attention to that when I was 18, 19, 20 years old. Could have kept a lot of young men probably uh, out of a lot of bad situations if we'd have listened and read those scriptures, but it also realizes that it has a spiritual meaning to it too, because in in this life, the devil's not going to come to us um, as dressed in red and a pitchfork. You know, he's actually going to come to us as that messenger of light. He's going to come to us as something that we want. It says that men are drawn away by the lust, you know, by their own lust is how the devil you know, deceives us. And if, and if we confess and, and our sins and we are truthful with God, that's exactly what happens to us. It, it, God uh, tells us and warns us, gives us this sound doctrine that, that makes perfect sense, that is 100% accurate, tries to give us this, tries to warn us not only of the good, but also warn us of the evil and how the evil is going to try its best to seduce us and uh, get us into all that mess. And even like people talk about, you know, and the scripture says uh, that, oh, but I had a good time for a season. And then after that season was up, then I had to, to pay what I owed. Then I, I basically made uh, my own bed that I wound up having, I dug my own grave, all these different little things. So where do we get a lot of these concepts from? We get it from sound doctrine. We get it from this sound word of God, like he's talking about here. Hold fast this, the form of sound words. It's what he's talking about. You've learned this, see? Look what he tells him. You, you've heard which thou, has, which thou has heard of me. Paul has tried. This is the second letter. So he also has the first letter. There's several chapters in these, okay? So... Paul's telling him, look, I've tried to give you as much advice as I can give you, and I've given you that, that advice, and this is what's amazing to me. Look what it says, which you've heard of me in faith and in love. Love is a word that we could talk about for a long time, but somebody who actually cares is going to tell you the truth. In faith, why? Because he had to believe these things. Paul physically had to go through these things himself. That's what Paul's telling him. Look, I've had faith. They've helped me. They've got me here to where I am. And look who they said they is, which is in Christ Jesus. He's telling him, look, I, I'm, I didn't just put these together because I wanted to. I didn't put these together just because I thought it was a great idea. Jesus is the one who taught me. Jesus is the one, if you really want to learn in the scriptures, uh, you hear in the world a lot, oh, but Jesus this and Jesus that. Look, sit down and read the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Listen to what Jesus actually said. Uh, if you don't understand what he says in one book, there's a pretty good possibility that one of the other three books have the same event through another man's eyes. It doesn't mean that happened in a different way. It just happened two people saw them from a different point of view. And sometimes that'll help you understand a little better about what those sound words of Jesus are actually meaning and saying and, and trying to help us. Look what it says in, in verse 14. It says, that good thing which was committed unto thee. Now, this is this is amazing because he's telling him, and we all have this as responsibility. You go buy a Bible. We have this blessing in our world. You go buy a Bible. That is a word that's committed unto us. It becomes our responsibility is what Paul's telling him here. 
look, this was committed unto you. This is something that was given to you. This is something that was uh, given as far as uh, almost like an inheritance, okay? It was given to him. And look what it says, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. That is who's actually keeping this going. A lot of times the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. We don't even know what to ask for. A lot of times the Holy Spirit's trying his best to teach us. We don't listen. We ignore. If we did tune our ear to the Holy Spirit and started actually doing what he asks us to do and following the advice that he gives us, and he's like, well, how do I know it's the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit's always going to teach you about Jesus, never going to steer you away from the Word of God. Remember, this is where we got this sound doctrine. Even Paul's saying, look, I've I've tried my best to give you this, but I want you to know that I've given you this through Jesus, about Jesus, and who's the one that's going to keep you? Paul's not saying, just keep rereading me, keep taking care of me, keep listening to me. Paul's saying, look, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit's the one who's going to keep this. The Holy Ghost is the one who's going to take care of this in you. He's the one that's going to keep it alive. He's the one that's going to keep it, Okay. And he dwells inside of us. That's that's the whole key. A lot of people want to walk around sometimes and say, "Oh well, when that when that uh, I was doing one thing, and then all of a sudden that uh, Holy Spirit came down on me. Actually, He came from within you. He He lives inside of me. He lives inside inside this body. And when um, whenever I'm doing something that I'm supposed to, when I'm reading the word of God, stirs up inside me that, that feeling that, man, I've got that fire burning in me. I feel like I'm supposed to give a testimony. I feel like I'm supposed to preach. I feel like I'm supposed to share. I feel like I'm supposed to pray with somebody. All of a sudden a verse comes to mind. How does that come to mind? Because the Holy Spirit's in here. He's inside and he he's, he's willing uh, to share. You look at the very simple translation of the Hebrew word of a Nabi, of a, of a prophet, was that Nabi, and you look at the letters, it actually talking about somebody who has a message inside, okay, waiting for it to get out. How did that message get there? It's inside of us. God's the one who puts it there. You know, very interesting how the Holy Spirit is the one who keeps us alive in us. Um, look what it says here. It says, this thou knowest that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me. I find that very interesting that out of all the places that he mentions, he mentions Asia. And the reason I say that's interesting is because if you go through and you actually read the entire Bible, which I encourage anybody to do, just sit down, I know you're not going to understand everything. I'm not telling you to race and try to get it all done in a year. There are different ways that you can do that. And there's different places, plans you can get to read it. But any Christian, any Christian out there, or non-Christian, I would encourage you to sit down and read the Bible sometime, all the way from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Just read through the entire Bible. Because a lot of times in my life, when I've read a scripture, it's very interesting to me how God will turn around and remind me that, wait a minute, that was somewhere else. And I'll go to Google or I'll go on my apps and I'll find word else that talks about that because it's interesting how different things come up and how they just stir up in you. Next thing you know, you're going to find yourself, wait a minute, I know that says it over here. Then you go over there and you're like, wait a minute, I know that was said over here. And next thing you know, you've spent an hour or two in the word of God and there's no no greater blessing than spending the word of time in the word of God other than the only thing I know that's better than spending your word time in the word of God is spending your time in the word of God with someone else. To me that's that's the only thing I know that's better than me finding something in scripture and that's for God to actually allow us to be two of us spending time together in the word of God because then we're learning from each other. Um, the reason I say this right here, and this is the scripture that I want to turn to for just a minute, that, that chapter, that verse there is going to be our verse to finish this, but I do want to read just one little section of verses because, um, he's specifically talking about there that the churches in Asia, and that's what he said. He said, knowest that all that all they which enter in Asia be turned away from me. All of them in Asia, okay? 
And the reason I want to read this is because of how it says this. Okay. Look what it says. This is Revelation chapter 1, verses, uh, verses 11, saying, this is what Jesus said, okay? I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and, and unto Laodicea. The reason I think it's very interesting was because Jesus specifically sends these letters to the exact same place over to Asia where Paul, obviously, he had ministry over there. And there must be seven churches down there that he's trying to correct. And it's interesting because if you read in Revelation, you'll see that the letters are two churches in Asia who aren't doing so good. There's only one out of all of them that is, is kind of doing the what they're supposed to. There are other ones. He has something against. Remember, he has, hey, you're doing this good, but I have something against thee. I have this good, but you have something against thee. He constantly talks about that. And he tells these churches to listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. So I just find that interesting. I, I don't know the time frame between these two, but I find it very interesting that not only does Paul make this comment here to Timothy to say, hey, that all they which in Asia be turned away from me, of whom uh, Phygelus and, and Hermogenes, I find that very interesting because Jesus addresses that exact same situation in the book of Revelation to where he knows. You know, this is one man that knows, hey, there's issues over there in Asia. You need to pray for them. Don't let it happen to you what happened to them. And then here Jesus says a couple books later that he's addressing, hey, I want you to send these letters to these guys because they got some issues over there and, I, and I'm wanting to address them. And John, I need you to write this letter and send it to them. It's just amazing to me because it goes back to God's word is the truth. God's word is that correction that we need. God's word is that sound word that makes perfect sense, that it's in perfect harmony with God's mind and soul that he's trying his best. God Father's trying his best to correct us, to help us. And here's this man, Paul, simple man, trying to help this younger man saying, look, my time's getting ready to be up, but I'm here trying to give you advice and, and trying to encourage you so that you can do these after I'm long gone. Holy Spirit's gonna be the one that keeps these up in you. God's word's gonna be in you. You've already had, you know, he's trying his best to give this man as much self-esteem as he can and guide him into the path to let him know that the Holy Spirit will always be there to guide him and help him. That's who he needs to trust. And anytime he needs to be grounded and founded in the knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. That's the point. That's what we should be doing as older Christians is doing the exact same thing with people is encouraging them to learn more about Jesus and more about what he has for us. Anyway, that's, that's, that's just a few verses that the Lord gave me today. Um, what a blessing it is, like I said, just to sit down and study and read the word of God. What a blessing it is to be able to share it, however means the Lord gives us. And I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ give us more understanding, each one of us, uh, as the faith that he's given us. Give us more understanding to not only see for ourselves what we need to do, but also that how much we really need to share the word of God with others, with the, with the younger ones. Look, if, if, if the younger ones aren't taught by the older Christians, then who's going to teach them? If we don't take the time to teach the younger kids, do we really think the world's going to teach them? Yeah, the world's going to teach them, but they're not going to teach them about Jesus because the world doesn't want Jesus. The world doesn't like the idea of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus is the light and Jesus reproved. I mean, they get, they get reproved. They get, you get around the light and you start realizing, man, I've got this wrong with me, this wrong with me. Huh? I guess I'm not who I thought I was. I need help. 
And the world doesn't like that because they're prideful. They, they don't want to accept the fact that they need help. They want to do things their way and they don't want to listen to the sound doctrine. So we need to teach each other. We need to teach our kids. I am living proof to be, teach your kids the truth. And then as they grow older, it's their decision. At least they have the opportunity to learn right from wrong. If they choose to do what they do, that's their choice. But I can tell you this, anybody who's been taught the word of God, the word of God's in them, and the word of God will pull them back in his time. Anyway, Lord Jesus, bless you all. You pray for me. I pray that the Lord bless you all and give you plenty of opportunities to share his son, Jesus Christ, as Savior. Amen.